IBM's X-Force Cloud Security Threat Landscape Report for 2021. I'm Tanya Hall and joining me is Nick Rossman, Global Lead for IBM Security X-Force Threat Intelligence. Welcome, Nick. Hey, Tanya. Thanks for having me. What is the mission for IBM Security's X-Force? The IBM Security X-Force team are helping to bring customers online, get them ready for attacks, and help them prepare for what's next. So we combine our incident response, X-Force Red penetration testing team, as well as threat intelligence to deliver that world-class capability to our clients. X-Force just released its 2021 Cloud Security Threat Landscape Report. So start by telling us, how is the report compiled? Yeah, we started to take a look at data from, you know, Q2 last year to this year, looking at everything from uh, the dark web, our incident response investigations, work our penetration testing teams are doing and putting that all together. I really think what we saw, Tanya, is that, you know, businesses control their own destiny on what they do on the cloud environment. Right, and, and they control how they're going to implement security. And it's some of those basic things that we often see with consumers, misconfigurations, using default passwords, uh, having accounts for sale on the dark web. We see the same thing uh, in cloud deployed applications as well. Uh, so it's coming down to what can businesses do better to be able to you know, take the proper configurations they need to for their cloud deployed applications. The report details an expanding attack surface in cloud environments. Explain that. Yeah, I think what we saw from our incident response investigations is that, you know, at first, the attackers are really interested in, in cloud environments, right? They can be very valuable for a couple of reasons. So the, the dark web, uh, we saw that there were about 30,000 uh, cloud accounts for sale there. Prices ranged from a dollar to like $15,000. And what they were potentially valuable for, a, a lot of those were for RDP uh, type accounts. And, and the price could change based on how many credits you have in your account, what geography it was located in, what cloud provider that you have. But it's super valuable for ransomware and crypto mining. Now, ransomware obviously taken us all by storm in the past several years, encrypting a cloud environment and your cloud deployed applications could potentially brick a business when you're talking about their critical workloads being on the cloud. They might not have that expertise to bring it back online. But I think the other aspect is crypto mining. So that's when you know, uh, an attacker, they use your cloud resources to mine for cryptocurrency. It's almost like they're bringing the mine to you and your resources. So they're spending your money using the energy that you're paying for from your cloud provider, literally all that compute power for them to generate more cryptocurrency. So that's just one of those as aspects that we saw with the environment. You mentioned misconfiguration. What role did that play? Yeah, it's really about configuring it out, right? Two thirds of the uh, incidents that we responded to had some sort of misconfiguration at play. You know, oftentimes that was an API-based misconfiguration, right? Tokens were not being properly uh, distributed to the right tooling, to the right individuals. So, you know, APIs were opened up to the public, to the environment overall for attackers to potentially get into to steal data. What we also saw from our X-Force Red uh, penetration team is that the vast majority of clients are using their default passwords, are using weak passwords on these cloud systems. And we talk about it all the time with consumers, and I know you do on your show, right? Use a password manager, use complex passwords. These are critical workloads that are still not secure. And we see these from major enterprises. So time and time again, it's critical to go back to those key things on how you're configuring your environment uh, to make sure that it's secure. You mentioned this, but what about password and policy compliance? You know, it's so important, Tanya, when we talk about the cloud workloads, right? Clients are shifting more and more there uh, for the critical work that they need to do. And we see time and time again that those passwords are often those admin accounts. It's They don't have the security policy expertise as well to be able to match the controls that they have in place 
to the policies that they really need. And so this skills gap that we talk about in the industry is, is especially wide in cloud security um, on the application side with where you know, enterprises, big you know, corporations are working from because they're not able to obtain that talent to be able to secure those environments. So those passwords are some of the basic things, right? Are you using an identity access management tool? Do you have the default settings taken off of your cloud environment every single time? Do you have tokens that are being uh, watched over and how those are exchanged in your environment? It, it's super critical to be able to secure the basics. Did the pivot to remote work play a role here? You know, I think that the pivot to remote work certainly did. You know, one of the things we saw from prior reports that we've done is that, you know, the number of accounts people have used has just skyrocketed, right? We've added Zoom and WebEx and all kinds of tools and different things we use to keep our children online and our partners. So we've had just an explosive number of passwords being created. And we see time and time again, about 80% of the time people are reusing those passwords. They're not very complex and people take those same passwords to work. So it's just adding up into an environment where the uh, pandemic has made remote work so vital for businesses, but it's really all those passwords we're creating are just creating another environment to be able to get into these cloud resources, right? Because as we see, one breach happens, a password stolen there or an account, they're able to match that up to an enterprise. Well, if you just start adding up stacks of passwords, you're gonna find more needles with more accounts that you have access to across these big businesses. So that's just one of the ways we saw the pandemic start to shift, uh, and, you know, the shift to remote work impact this security issue. Tell us more about dark web flea markets. How, how does those work? You know, it's really interesting. You know, and we see this across so many different account types. Uh, and when we went to take a deep dive look at this, we saw, you know, tens of thousands of cloud accounts that are available there. And the prices went up and down, right? Depends on the resources you have, who's your provider, how many credits that you have available. Oftentimes though, there were um, selling RDP access, right? Very easy way to get into the environment and use some of those resources, upload a crypto miner to be able to use. I think the, uh, it's gonna be a burgeoning part of the dark web as we start to you know, hopefully see consumers shifting their mindset on passwords. But you know, the value of it, if you think about it this way, Tanya, if someone steals your password, they've got access to your accounts, right? Your identity, which is valuable and hard for you to be able to handle. But when they're stealing a password to cloud computing environments, this is potentially millions of dollars worth of computing power that they'd have at their fingertips, right? To be able to use those crypto miners on or deploy ransomware uh, to be able to ransom a, a company. Based on the learnings from the report, what recommendations can you offer to harden cloud applications and infrastructure? You know, I think it starts with a couple of things. One, you've got to start to modernize your cloud environment, take an open approach to it. Um, it at IBM, we would say uh, open hybrid cloud approach. Make sure your tools are able to be used across the multiple cloud environments that you have available and the ones that you're accessing today. I think also take a zero trust approach. We, we talk a lot about that in security, but what that really means is assume you're compromised. That also has impacts on how you're managing account credentials, how you're managing lateral movement. We saw attackers often starting in an on-prem environment and moving to the cloud environment during the breaches that we took a look at. So having a zero trust approach, not just on your cloud environment, but on your whole network is vitally important. I think two is uh, test, test, test. Test your plan with an incident response team, how you're gonna do this if you get breached on a cloud, your those cloud applications, what does it mean? And bring a penetration testing team in. You, you've got an com increasingly complex environment you're trying to manage now. You've got your on-prem workloads, hybrid, fully cloud. You've got a lot of infrastructure that you're trying to man manage. Have a penetration team available to be able to figure out what's potentially misconfigured that you can tighten up immediately and get some value out of. Where can we go to get a copy of the report, Nick? You can go to securityintelligence.com. It's in that threat research section. You can see the latest. Nick Rossman, Global Lead for IBM Securities, Exports Threat Intelligence. If somebody wants to connect with you personally, Nick, what's the best way they can do that? 
Easiest thing, just go uh, connect with me or follow me on LinkedIn. Sounds good. Thanks for joining us, Nick. Thank you. And find and subscribe to more of my interviews right here on all the major podcast platforms under the Tanya Hall Innovation Show or at tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.